Hi, so we've got another day of the coronavirus pandemic and the crisis that follows it. The impact on employment is uh, obviously significant. The impact on our economy is massive. The impact on the way we work is also significant and massive. And uh, recently I posted a video on the uh, issue of working from home. Employees' obligations to start looking at uh, things like health and safety and the well-being of their employees working at home. Today I want to move into the workplace because there are a lot of people in the workplace that are unable to work from home. Anyone involved in logistics, HEV drivers, uh, so on, delivery drivers, people in warehouses, people in key industries, um, all sorts of people that are unable to work from home because they've got to be where the clients are, they've got to be the, the people that are driving the goods to and from, the people that are working in shops, all sorts of people that are working in the industries that are keeping us supplied whilst we're at home and working to keep us safe. Now, for those people, there's got to be some, some awareness of the new health and safety issues that are going to impact on them. Now, when we think about this, I think about it almost, well, really, historically, because when I left school in 1971, I went to work as a, as a trainee technician in a textile mill. In that mill, cotton fibres were floating all over the place. There was well over a thousand workers working in that mill, and cotton fibres were floating in the air. You could virtually see them in the air. In the evening time when people left uh, to, to go home, we were, we were picking the fibres off each other's clothes, almost like chimps grooming each other, uh, just pulling those things off, off, off the backs of each other, uh, sometimes wrapping sellotape around our hands to do so. There was no such thing as a face mask in that mill. No one ever provided them. No one thought to provide them. No one thought to ask for them. This was 1971, three years before the Health and Safety at Work Act came into force. By the time the Health and Safety at Work Act came into force, I was a young shop steward in the engineering union. And at that time, I then, along with many of my other union colleagues, started to force employers to uh, to take the issue of health and safety much more seriously. But it took a fight. Can you believe that? That in that time we had to fight for health and safety at work. Now, because of the coronavirus, we're having to think about it again. We're having to think about the things that we've taken for granted, we can no longer take for granted. So we have to think about health and safety in work and uh, and how we're going to ensure that the employees are kept safe, as safe as possible from this very, very serious uh, virus that seems to attack, well, does attack with no discrimination on who. All you've got to do, come in contact with it and you could be a carrier or you could be a victim. Uh, so we have to make sure that we contain it as best as possible. But for some businesses, they can't just stop. They can't furlough the workers and they can't uh, work, work from home as we've uh, discussed. So what are you gonna do about it as an employer? Now, a lot of employers will do things because they have to, because they're forced to, because they've done some, some kind of risk uh, assessment on what it would cost them if they didn't do something. <clears throat> And some employers, uh, good employers, think, well, I have an obligation here. I have a moral duty here. I have a duty of care, which is how it's worded within the Health and Safety and Work Act. Employers have a duty of care towards their employees. Employees have a responsibility to practice that duty of care towards themselves and towards their colleagues. And should the employee not, not do such, and that is the vicarious responsibility of the employer. So it's important, it's incumbent upon you, the employer, to make sure that people are practicing a good practice in terms of health and safety at work. 
But this is new to us. This is brand new to us. We're, and we're, we're learning something every day about the spread. We're learning something every day about what we can do about it. The rules are changing on this constantly as, is, as our knowledge improves. But some things that we can do straight away, some things that we know that we can do straight away. First, we start looking at how we can impose social distancing in our world of work. Where once people might have stood side by side at a bench, uh, they can no longer do that. You must be able to start taking uh, those people and creating distance between people in work. You must think about the issue of PPE and in, as a minimum things like face masks and uh, gloves and you must think that those gloves must those gloves and those face masks must be disposed of in a in a safe way once used don't have people reusing the same stuff day in and day out because if you think about this on those gloves there will become an accumulation of germs those germs can then spread People can wash their hands frequently, but when, we, when they're using the gloves, they may be lured into a false sense of security and not dispose of them correctly or keep wearing them or keep repeatedly wearing them. You must introduce safe ways of disposing of such PPE as those. You must make sure that people are washing their hands frequently in work. That, uh, that when people go to the uh, to the toilet for wh whatever reason, they must wash their hands. Now I know that that sounds silly in this day and age, but the amount of times that I have been in toilets, in offices, and in factories uh, over recent years, and and seen people use the toilet and go out the door without washing their hands. It's unbelievable, it's unbelievable but true. When I end up leaving the, leaving a, um, an office toilet and open the door with my little finger from the very bottom of the, of the, of the, of the toilet door, I start thinking like I'm Howard Hughes in the film The Aviator. It, it gets such a, a, such a, a frightening situation and now it is even more important that people must wash their hands frequently during the day. So in work, the practices of social distancing, frequent uh, hand washing and wearing correct PPE, disposing of that correct PPE, those are just basic measures that you can take. In your industry, you will know more. You will know more about what you can do. And you must think, think and think about how much more you can do to protect your employees and how they can uh, fulfill their uh, responsibilities towards each other. Now I want to talk about something else uh, to do with the well-being of the people that remain in work. It might well be that some of their colleagues have been furloughed. It might well be that some of their colleagues are now working from home. So those are actually in the place of work, especially within small, small companies where everyone knows each other really, really well. There's a, an issue here about the uh, social context of being in work. Uh, when people are, are furloughed, then the employer is only having to pay 80% of the salary which they obtain via the government. So those that are in work continue to earn uh, a, a full wage. Now, it may be that some people say, well, they're lucky, aren't they? But when you start looking at, at things in, this, in the way that uh, redundancies are made, the survivors often suffer anxiety. The people that are not made redundant suffer anxiety as a result of uh, their colleagues being made redundant and them not. Uh, and, it's, and it could be the same kind of thing with this. The issues of continuing communication with colleagues, especially colleagues that are now either working from home and furloughed. So, just like yesterday when I suggested that uh, employers set up uh, communication systems, it is important that those that are in work are included in those communication systems and so that they can be talking to other people about what they're doing now and talking to them 
uh, about issues in work so that everyone is kept informed that a company keeps its company with each other so start thinking about all of these things so be safe and uh, later in the week there will be an update from me on the uh, furloughing rules because there's going to be another po podcast another um, webinar from the Chartered Institute of Personal De and Development that will give me more information on that and I will make sure that that is put out in video format so stay safe and goodbye <laughs>